I've spent the last year gearing up for Zion Williamson to make his way to the NBA, but it seems like before we can talk about his future, we have to talk about what shoe he's gonna wear. What's up everybody, I'm Jackie Ray, and I gotta tell you, I can't wait for the NBA draft, which happens on June 20th, and if you wanna stay up on all the latest in draft news, make sure you keep watching The Fumble, hit that subscribe button, and follow me on all things social media at JRayTheFanatic. I know we all have our favorites going into this NBA draft. Personally, I want to see what happens with all the Duke squad. Of course, Zion is number one for me. But I also want to see what happens with RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, and even Kobe White from North Carolina. I want them all to have breakout rookie seasons. That is going to take a lot of focus. So I am hoping that Zion can get this shoe deal taken care of ASAP. He was supposed to make a decision around the time of the draft lottery, but here we are and no deal. But that could be because Zion is in one of the biggest bidding wars of all time. Zion is looking at getting at least $100 million dollars in a shoe deal. To put that into perspective, King James signed an $87 million deal right out of high school. Obviously, Nike and Adidas are the two front runners because, well, they have the deepest pockets. But ESPN is reporting Under Armour, Puma, and even Kawhi's New Balance are making a run for the 18-year-old hoop star. Even Master P and Romeo want to offer Zion $20 million to rock their shoe brand. Now, that is roughly $80 million less than what he will get anywhere else, but hey, a closed mouth don't get fed, right? But we have to wonder, is the exploding Nike the reason for Zion delaying and signing a deal? Now, if you believe the latest photos circling social media, no, because TMZ posted a pic of Zion rocking the Nike Kyrie 4s at a workout in LA earlier this month. Now, if it comes down to just money, yes, I do think he will sign with Nike, but I don't think we should just jump the gun and assume that because he's wearing Nikes, it means he's made a decision because let's not forget the mountain of shoes Nike sent to his home after his Nike exploded in the first minute of the game against UNC. I would bet Zion's whole squad is rocking a pair of Nikes right now. He's probably given some away and he still has a ton left. But either way, this is the best way for him to learn that the media is going to watch and speculate on every move he makes. It is time to become very calculated in your moves, my friend. Meanwhile, let's not forget how all the stars had to perfectly align to save Zion from that Knicks bullet. With the Knicks having the worst record in the league, it was mathematically probable that they would get the number one pick. But instead, the Knicks will select third after New Orleans and Memphis. The Pelicans, of course, are expected to take Zion and Memphis will probably take Ja, but that still leaves plenty, plenty of talent on the board for a solid number three pick. But is that the way of the Knicks? Or not. Bleacher Report is reporting that the Knicks are toying with the idea of trading their number three pick to the Hawks so they can have their number eight and number 10 picks. Why? Why would this happen? Now, to be fair, SNY is reporting that as of right now, this trade is not under serious consideration. That is not the right answer. The answer should be, hell no, nah, that is a bold-faced lie. We are not doing that. But then again, this is the Knicks we're talking about, so who knows? But the Knicks are not the only ones who are plagued with silliness right now. Even though Anthony Davis has shouted from the rooftops that he wants out of New Orleans and caused the trade scandal for everyone here in LA, the Pelicans' new executive vice president, David Griffin, thinks he can convince AD to stay with the team. Griffin met with AD this week, and he hopes to continue talks with AD in the future. I personally think AD is on the roll the credits zone and he's out. But with Zion in the mix, it could be a good look. Kendrick Perkins, however, does not agree with me. He deserves to go to a, a, another franchise and start his journey. Um, I, he don't have time to really wait to see what type of player Zion is gonna be. Right. Perkins also pointed out that the Pelicans were the least viewed team on national TV. That is true, but I can't see that continuing to be the case if AD remained and you get one of the most highly anticipated draft picks we've seen in a while. Nevertheless, the shirt they zoomed in on on that clip says, that's all folks. So in my head, AD is out. 
but that shouldn't be cause for concern for the Pelicans. You knew it was coming and Zion is going to be fantastic. Now, obviously Zion will have to adjust to the faster pace of the NBA. He's going to have to improve his shooting game, especially his mid and even his long range. He'll have to adjust to the different defensive styles in the NBA, but Tracy McGrady notes one area of concern that a lot of people agree with. He's 18, 19 years old. He's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, already 285. That, over the course of an 82 game, mm -hmm. you know, season, the rigors of the NBA, it would take a toll on him quick. Okay. okay, the games are also a lot longer and a lot faster. So I think that alone will help him keep his weight stable. And with a $100 million shoe deal, he can pay a dietitian to make sure his diet is consistent. Either way, Zion is going to put people in the seats. The ratings are going to go up. So I'm with David Griffin. I'm thinking you try to find a crack in this armor and help convince AD to stay. But I want to hear from you. If you are a Knicks fan, please explain how this trade for the 8th and 10th pick even made it into conversation. Who wins the Zion bidding war and is Zion enough to convince AD to stay? Let me know in the comments below. Once again, I'm Jackie Ray and thanks for watching The Fumble.